welcome to the stars in the making with the mission to inspire and frame the future the star Jinjing from china who made the life-changing decision to move to us a decade ago for college throughout her journey she had to pick up different jobs along the way and she had the privilege of working in the top companies in the us crossing paths with fascinating individual among them the co-founder of linkedin and more Today, she's one of the top photographers in New England with her own studio and working for Casa Soccer League with more than 40 teams. Sharing a story with the stars in the making for someone's survival guide to never give up and go after your dreams. Please, let's welcome the star, Jinji. Hey guys, welcome to the Stars in the Making. My name is Ricardo. Today we're gonna to talk about underdog stories. What it takes to make it as an immigrant. Please, let's welcome Jinjin from China. Welcome. Thank you. How you doing? I'm doing good. Oh, awesome. Oh my goodness, it's been a back and forth again, yeah. but we made it today. Yep. Thank you so much for being in the Stars in the Making. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's start um, introduce yourself, please, to our viewers. Yep. Uh, my name is Jingjing, and I got here like 10 years ago. I lived in Silicon Valley for almost eight years, and I moved to Boston uh, two years ago, and I love Boston. So right now, I am a data analyst in the hospital, but also on the side, I do photography business. So that's why I saw me. Beautiful. So, uh, reading your story is very, you have a very inspirational story. Yeah. I really love it. And um, please, how your journey started as a, as a kid? What was your dream like? Um, when I was a kid, um, <laughs> I think I grew up with a lot of love from my parents, my siblings and cousins. So, I don't think I dream that big. I guess, right. I think when I was a child, I guess I just want to be like a confident person and uh, don't even worry about anything and just be happy. And I guess I am still happy and then that's my only dream, I guess. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. So um, we are talking about how to make it as an immigrant. And so your story, you have a very successful story. And I really, I wanted to know how do you start? It's like when you got here, what was the most epic moment for you? What was your expectation? Like, you know, when, once you moved to the United States? Okay, so I think my story is a bit different compared to other international students. Uh -huh. So when I was in college in China, I was only one year away from graduation and I got a chance to work in the U.S. Yeah. So, it's, so it is like a temporary work program. <laughs> so you spend three months in the U.S. and you work here and the money you make can cover all your living expenses. So before I finished the program, I visited a local community college in California. So I went to the international office and asked how much it can cost for me to study here. So they told me the total amount. I realized um, it's not too expensive and my parents can afford it. So at that day, I called my mom and said, Mom, I want to stay in the U.S. to study here. My mom said, yeah, if you can go, just go then. So, but I still have to deal with my, um, my paperwork in China. So I went back to China and I kind of like quit my college. It's only one year, one, one year away from graduation, right? So my professor told me, Jinjia, are you sure? Because once you quit, you can never go back. Because it's different in China. Yeah. So right now, like in US, right, even 35 or 40, you still can go back to college anytime. Mm. But in China, once you quit, it's kind of like you're done. Well, right? the, the, go, go back. So in China, once you are in certain age, you, can, you can't go back to college? Well, Is that it? Um, well, you still can go back to college, but it's very, very difficult mm. because they don't have the information anymore, right? So, you, like, so, so since I'm one year away from graduation, right? So if I want to go back to college again, I need to start, start over again. Start from my high school, last year high school, to okay. take the college entrance exam. So basically, the three you did is wasted. Yeah, so it's very, very different. But here, okay, you, for example, you're 23 or 25. You leave college like two years later, right? When you come back, the, the, the credits you took are still valid, but in China, no. So you got to start again. So it's very, very difficult. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. And so uh, there is one thing in your story that I was really, I was able to see. It's very inspirational. You did several, um, talk to me before I even go there. Yeah. Uh, what was your most, like a difficult moment that you had to face here in US when you got here? Do you remember some specific event? Um, I think there are two things, right? The first yeah. is the language barriers, right? I think all the immigrants, all, all international Yeah, the language barrier, yeah, exactly. exactly. Right? And then the second thing is like a culture shock. So, so the first time I got here, I was living with my host family. And uh, so I was 20 at that time. Mm -hmm. So we went to a grocery store to, uh, to get some grocery. So the checkout counter, I was holding two grocery bags for her, right? Because I feel I'm 20, I can help you out. And then when we go home, she was very mad. And I was like, what are you mad about? She said, because you carry the, the grocery bag, you make it the checkout counter, like the checkout cashier think I'm very mean to you. I was like, no, no, I'm just trying to help you out. Mm -hmm. I said, no, no, you make me think I'm very mean to you because they can tell I'm a whole family kid, right? Right, right, right. So it was, it was a shock to me, to be honest. That's I was just right. trying to do the next thing, you know, mm -hmm. like, because I treat her like my mom, because she's my mom age. Like, when I go to the grocery with mom, I always carry mm -hmm. stuff for her. Right. So it gets a different culture, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, culture shock, I think, is something like it's very, we all face that. It's very difficult to, sometimes you think that you are doing something mm -hmm. nice and then the other person, you know, misunderstand it and then just become, you know, the whole differences. Yeah, exactly. Tell me about your dream. What was your, what do you wanted to accomplish as you coming from China to America? Um, I guess I wouldn't say a better life because <laughs> you can have a good life anywhere, right? But I guess everyone wants to come to, come to US. Um, I'm the same, I guess. Right. Um, so I think I want to have a less stressful life because in China it's very competitive. That's why I guess sometimes the international students they don't want to go back to China because it's so competitive. When you say competitive, like uh, example. Like a job Expl market. Uh -huh. Yeah, in Singapore there are so many like tech like positions, right? So that's why a lot of like CS students yeah. they go to Silicon Valley right? instead of going back to China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The salary is definitely higher. And the other thing is um, I kind of want my mom to come to the U.S. as well, right? So that I can take her to travel, and then because the U.S. is so close to Europe, right? And then she loves Europe, so it's convenient for both of us to to travel. And then, yeah. Wow. Not nothing very like big, but just like very some simple wishes. What like, is that? I don't dream anything very big. Uh huh. I just something simple, like have an easy life. Yeah, yeah. and I like. I don't make a lot of money. I wouldn't say I'm very successful, but I'm very happy of where I'm at right now, though. No, I'm I very happy. Hope that. So definition, when you say about, I don't say I'm very successful, but what is your definition of success? <laughs> well, how do you define success? Because I believe that success, we all define success differently. Okay, there are two, I think for me, there are two yeah. answers, right? Uh -huh. The first one is like, like everybody else. You make a lot of money. Yeah. You have a beautiful family. Like your own family, right? Right. And then not successful, right? But for the other, the other answer I'll give to you is that you are happy of where you are right now. And you have a stable job, and then just you have inner peace with yourself. Right. And then you don't rely on anybody else, you're independent. That's the second type of answer. I guess for me, I still think how much you make can kind of see your success, yeah. So for right now, I don't think I reached the goal I wanted yet. Okay. But it's, it's starting now. Like I'm I doing, see. That's why I'm doing photography. Yeah. I love that. We're gonna get, we're gonna get to <laughs> photography. Not yet. Not yet. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there is one thing that you would talk to me about U.S. and China again. It seems like it's the same uh, question, mm -hmm. but um, I wanted to know more. Uh, that is in your story. As I was reading your story, you were talking about. Uh, the differences, like uh, you love to be in a place where there is different ethnicities and stuff like that. That's why you uh, you choose U.S. Something like that. Can you explain that a little bit? So when I uh, when I was in college in China, right, I didn't, I wasn't select the major I wanted to study. I wanted to study English, but somehow my college placed me as a political science major student. I hate it so much. 
And then in the three years, I can't teach a lot of my class because I don't like it. So when I got a chance to come to the US, I was like, fun, I'm free. So the first semester, I took three classes. The three classes are English writing, mm -hmm. French, and Spanish. Because I try to get exposed as much as I can. Because in California, like a lot of people speak Spanish, right? Because the historical, historical reason, a lot of Mexican people there too. So, and the French is something like very romantic. I want to learn. So I'm like first semester, I'm, I'm gonna do it very fast. So I'm just gonna take it my time, take it slowly, and then, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. I'm going back. I think many would like me to ask this. Yeah. Uh, this question. So. You in school, you got here by yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So throughout college, who you had to do different jobs or? Yes. Yeah, talk to me about that because I think that's most people gonna relate into that. When we come here, it's like you come by yourself, you yeah. have to do everything by yourself, yeah. no one else. And I think that's the most difficult thing. I think even myself, I can see myself into that. Please, let's talk a little bit more about that because we don't have family here, we don't have anyone. So how you were able to strive by yourself for the whole 10 years and become, you know, this successful lady? <laughs> 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 it's a successful question mark. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I know, I know. We, we will never, I don't think we will be able to get like 100% uh, there, but what you have done, it's really amazing. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so my first job yeah. uh, when I come to US was actually working in Six Flags. I don't even know Six Flags, it's an amusement park. Right. Yeah, so yep. I worked there for three months. And I was in college, uh, I was working for a private uh, school in, in, in Silicon Valley as a summer program uh, teacher assistant. So the kids are from China, they need some like a teacher assistant to be able to translate the language. But the kids are very small, they're like 10 to 12 years old, something like 8 years old, right? So for example, if some emergency happened, the, English, the, the teachers speak English, but nobody speaks Chinese, right? But the kids speak Chinese, so I'm like translator, kind of, and also um, so I worked that program for like a six weeks in a row, from Monday to Friday, but on weekends. So you were working as a translator? Kind of. Like okay. a teacher assistant, right? You have to do everything else. Oh. On top of that, you have to translate if there's some emergency situation happens. Mm -hmm. And on weekends, I was working for uh, Panama Republic as a sales associate. So basically, you know, like where they sell clothes, right? So you get to practice a lot of English a lot. And after that, uh, in college, I also did a lot of uh, event coordination. So there's like a Chinese company, just like a TechCrunch in the U.S. Right. So they come to you, they come to U.S. Silicon Valley to host a lot of tech events. So I help them to um, to coordinate the most of the stuff because their whole team is in China, right? Because of time difference, and then start to reach a lot of people and build a lot, quite a lot of connections. Some some of them are like, and like uh, investors, startup funders, stuff like that, and. Um, and I also tried to get some sponsorship for these events. Yep. So I went to a lot of exhibition, uh, like conferences, and eventually I did get some like a, a sponsorship, like Whoa. like six thousand dollars for that event. <laughs> and I got some money back because like, well, I didn't think, we didn't expect to do that, but he got it, and then I got some percentage as well. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Talking about uh, these events that you did, you work as an organizer e yes. event, so you were able to meet different people. A lot of people. A lot of yeah. people, like founders, one of the most important people in, in the country. Yeah. So among of, uh, among of these people, it's the founder of LinkedIn, the yes. co-founder of LinkedIn. Yeah. Mm. So like, we have to invite a lot of like keynote speakers. A lot of a lot of speakers like they are like the founders of like companies like mm -hmm. Netflix, like tech companies everywhere, right? Um, it's quite interesting. Um, after I did that, uh, I also did a lot of, I, I was also working for a Chinese company. So that company is also based in Shanghai. So they bring a lot of uh, executives to come to US to visit like a tech company. Like for example, Google, Facebook, and other like uh, uh, incubators. So they need somebody in the US to, to connect those dots. So they give me the, port, the content information, so I reach the people out. And then sometimes we have to bring those people to go to like uh, Stanford, even Howard, and have to come with the, those group, the dedicates, to come here and um, invite those professors, give a talk about like entrepreneurship, give about like a culture, like a uh, management stuff to those like executives. Sometimes we have college kids, 
and then college and then high school kids coming as well. Yeah, that's another thing. Right. So I, so after I worked at a tennis company for two three years, yeah. I was like, yes, I can do this myself because I have all the connections, right? <laughs> because my parents they're entrepreneurs. So I'm like, yeah, I'm ready now. I graduate. So your your parents the entrepreneurs. They are. Awesome. They are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So I guess. So that's why you have all this drive. I, I think so. Yeah. Right. I don't think I will ever be able to make that much that much money like my dad did. Yeah. But I think we'll have our different paths, right? So I'm just trying to <laughs> follow my own paths, yeah. Exactly. So roughly like uh, four years ago, like uh, one year before pandemic hit, it, uh, hit. So I was working for a Chinese, another Chinese company. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of like become like a partner for that position. Basically they give me like a salary every month, but also the money I make for the program, I got a 50%. So, so basically, I recruit the students right. from China, and they come here in winter and summer, sometimes throughout the year as well. So they will visit um, like MIT and Harvard, so I invite those professors and also those students to give like lectures to these kids. Right. And also sometimes we go to the MIT, the, the, um, they have a museum, right? The museum has some workshop. Mm -hmm. The workshops are interesting, it's like, like $2,000. And then you can invite the whole students come there and then do like a programming stuff. Even same thing in San Francisco. So there are two companies called um, Wonder Workshop. It's the most famous robotic companies uh, that is targeting to like uh, kids' education. Even Barack Obama recommended this to the to all the school uh, in the U.S. for programming study. So I reached out to this company and I asked if we can bring my kids to go to a headquarter and then you can let us use product, and they love it. They say, yes, we just, we're about to release a new uh, robotics. We want your kids to test out. So that worked out. And I brought, I brought quite a lot of kids went to their company. The other company is called This Space. It's very famous. Um, they have a, like maybe like 200 patents. Mm -hmm. So it's about VR stuff. So for example, as a doctor, right, you want to do like a heart surgery. How do you do it? If it's VR, it's very easy to, to do, right? So I brought kids to go to headquarter too, and let kids experience what is what is VR. Yeah, so I did quite a lot of stuff. Yeah. Wow, that's a, that's an incredible story. Yeah. And I wanna, I actually, I don't wanna cut you off again. Um, yeah, I I actually, I wanted to go back. Do you do you had? I wanna go back to your college. Do yeah. you had any difficulties uh, when you were in college to get it done? Like you got to the point where. You thought that okay, I think um, I'm not. I'm not gonna make it. I'm gonna go home. Um, give, like giving up. Do you had any any story I... <laughs> that maybe you told yourself that okay, I, I really have to make it because I mean it's very difficult when you are here alone. Yeah, it's yeah. not that easy. Well, yes. So uh, last year in college, because my major is management information system. Right. So it's a business major, but it's like a STEM major, right? So you have to learn the programming stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's kind of like difficult, difficult for me somehow. And I was for of, you. For me. You right. For me. For yeah. Me. <laughs> for me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I feel like when I graduate, I'm able to find a job, even though I was doing everything in college. But I right. still don't think I find a tech related job, right? So I'm like. But like then I still have a boyfriend. I'm like, should I just quit my college for one year and attend like a boot camp? Yeah. Because in Eastern Silicon Valley, it's very popular. If you kind of find a job, just graduate, whatever, and just <laughs> attend one year boot camp, you can find a job very easily. Like, I wouldn't say like a programmer, but as a data analyst, right, it's very popular at that time. You can find a job easily. So I'm like, ah, let me just quit my college and then just participate with this program. There is a program called Assembly in San Francisco. Right. I think it costs roughly like, roughly like $10,000. My boyfriend said, no, that's very expensive. Just stick to it. Just go to, just finish your last year college. I'm like, no, I, I, can, I can do this. I'm going to attend the program. So we're going back and forth. I said, Ginger, you have to do this. You're just one year away from graduation. I said, sure, I'll force myself. Oh. And then graduate. That's and, a... then, and then the rest is story now. Wow, um, beautiful. <laughs> and among all the jobs, the companies mm -hmm. that you had to work, what was your experience? What do you something like valuable that you took from that from there um i think i like work at stanford a lot because the people matters to me so okay here's the thing 80 percent of the job is actually not dealing with like technical stuff it's actually right. dealing with people mm -hmm. if you're happy with the people you're working with then you're doing good in a way yeah Right now, I'm working for Dental Pharma, I like, I like my colleagues. Um, yeah. But I also like my colleagues in Stanford because everybody's very helpful. Yeah. 
It's very different. I'm working for most hospital, right? But in my current position, it's more like a te technical role. So I only work with small group people. But when I was working for Stanford, I was the residency program coordinator, which mm -hmm. means I'm the main contact for the whole department. Mm -hmm. So we have like a 75, roughly 80 like, uh, professors, like yeah. uh, attending faculty. And then we have around maybe like a 20 or 30 um, training like doctors, right? You have to work with everybody. And I have to plan the whole year's academic event. That's a rough like 200 events per year. And sometimes we have like we have to work with other hospitals, mm -hmm. especially when the when the hospital when the doctors need to join Stanford or leave Stanford, you have to work with other hospitals, like different departments. Okay. So you get to know how to talk to people, how to communicate people because sometimes people can be difficult, right? Yeah. So I enjoy working with different type of people. If you would have to give an three words or few words of advice uh, mm -hmm. to someone out there, like, you know, what would be? Mm. Especially because you have so much experience in working with different, you know, different yeah. uh, places and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There is one thing that you would tell someone? Yeah. Never be afraid to ask questions or ask for help. Because it's the U.S. And then when you ask people for help or questions, people are very willing to help you. So mm -hmm. just never, ask, never be afraid to ask questions. Uh, the second thing is that um, have your own voice. So when in a meeting, right, just say things that you want to say. And uh, sometimes people might value your opinion. And I think it's very, very important to be heard in the U.S. So, so it's kind of very different. Like, when I was in college in class, right? So we have Indian, class, we have Indian students, we have Chinese students. But Chinese people would never raise our hands or like talk about our opinions or in a discussion. But Indian students, they always raise a question, they always ask a question. Right? So it's very, very different. And um, so if you look at the management level in the, in the Silicon Valley, a lot of management level actually Indian people, not Chinese people, because we don't, we're very shy, and it's, some are very shy, right? And we don't really want to voice to be heard, heard. But I think it's very important to have your own voice. And so to other, get out of your, uh, your shyness. Yes, mm -hmm. and then be more confident. Be confident. It's I wanted wrong. to talk about confidence. Yeah. So talk to me about <laughs> confidence. How can you get out of the, you know, um, just like you, you were very confident. <laughs> and you say you, you used to be shy, right? I'm very shy, yeah. No, you're not shy. It, I'm you're, very, I'm you were sh I'm still very shy. But how can you get off the, your comfort zone? Because here the thing, right? I'm in this country alone, myself. Nobody's gonna look after me. I love that. Yeah, nobody's gonna look after I you. You have that. to look after yourself. And um, you have to go out to make connections, to make friends. Because sometimes you don't know what connection. Please repeat that. How, how can we get out of our comfort zone? I love what you just said. Please repeat that. Go again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the I, I love that. I love that. The moment is gone. <laughs> Um, I think the reason why you have to push yourself to be confident because when you're in, in another country alone without somebody taking care of you, without your family to support you, then you have to make it. You have to build connections. And then once you build connection, it can lead you to different routes. And then sometimes those routes are very beautiful. And then it can turn your life to a different direction too. It's a life-changing event that can, can happen if you are very confident. And there's this thing called the law of attraction, right? If you think that good things can happen to you, then we'll have it eventually. Wow. So you just have to be confident. The other things could be cliche, like fake it till you make it, right? So. Exactly. <laughs> Pretty much where your focus goes, your energy flows. Yes. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. So any particular thing that you wanted to say, uh, let's say mm -hmm. a little girl or just a 15-year-old or a 20-year-old girl, coming to U.S. or so any part of the world, you know, traveling by themselves, what is the advice you would give to them, at least to not give up in their dreams? Yeah. Um, it's hard to find your passion. Sometimes it can take a forever, it can take a 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, right? So we have only 15 or even 20, whatever. Just try different things. Eventually you'll find it. And sometimes when you try different things, it might seem like you're a failure because you're not good at it, right? But it's not true. It just means you're not good at one thing. It doesn't mean you're, good, you're not going to go at the other thing. Just keep trying and then never give up. Eventually, you'll find something that speaks to you. Wow. Yeah. That's really amazing. Now, I want to go, I want to jump into what are you doing actually right now. Sure. Um, so you are the main photographer 
of Casa yeah. League. Yeah. And also you do weddings as yeah. well. So I do everything for actually. You, you, you a machine. That's the main reason we had to call you to the stars in the make. She's definitely a star in the making. Please talk to us about it. What are you doing now? So I'm a juggling between two jobs. Right. So Monday to Friday, I work in the hospital. And on weekends, I do photography, right? But even on weekdays, for example, I do um, engagement for the show in like Seaport and downtown, like Boston Common Park, like six o'clock to seven, so one hour. And uh, weekends I do many, uh, right now it's a, it's a soccer season, fall season, right? So I took like a, I take photos, um, like four or five games a day. Right. And I go home, I edit the photos, and then release the photos and to the players. And Sunday, I'm going repeat again. Sunday, maybe I have a wedding photo shoot. So for photography, what I offer is, um, actually it's very interesting. I did um, corporate professional headshots in, in Dana Farber. And then I did like 18 people's mm -hmm. headshots. And then oh. everything is already added out and it looks perfect. That's amazing. So I, I, I do um, professional headshots and then newborn baby shots. And I also offer like a family uh, portrait and then couple en engagement and then also special occasions, special requests. What the? Yeah. And it's a dream for the shoot. As you can see my profile, there's a hot model, female model, and some like hot. <laughs> Guys with six pack, right? <laughs> I got a lot of views right. on that photo. <laughs> yeah. Guys with six pack? <laughs> yes. As a matter of fact, I do have another one coming out too. Oh wow. He, he's a gym coach. Uh huh. And also I do something creative creative as well. Um yeah. No, and, that's uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. So, hear this thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like a soccer photographer doesn't make it much doesn't make a lot of money, but wedding makes a lot of money. So I'm trying to find a balance. Oh. So, Soccer photography is something I'm passionate about because when you go to the field, right, and then like three months or four months in a row, those, those soccer, you can see the soccer players all the time, but maybe a different team because I don't shoot with all teams. There are 40 teams. I cannot shoot with a team every week. But you can tell people are very passionate about what they do because sometimes it's very, very hot and it's very, very cold as well because of raining, right? Even with heavy rain, they still have to play. Sometimes the goalkeeper, like one team is missing one goalkeeper, right? And they borrow from that goalkeeper. That means that guy has to play three hours in street, street, mm -hmm. in the ring. But they're very passionate about it. And I just want to do something nice to them as well. So I was only required to provide like 50 to 70 images per game. But I always end up providing like 50, sorry, 150 to 250 images. And that means I'm adding that, much, that many photos. And I'm doing this actually for free as well. Because I also want to get the single shots of each player because they come out of the play, right? I want right. to capture everybody. But I wasn't required that. I only need to get the action shots because action shots are only for social media. I'm just trying to be nice. Awesome. And um, I also bought a drone two weeks ago. So I started taking drone footage so that when the players, they can, when they look at the photo, right, yeah. they can also get some like a drone footage. I don't get additional pay for that either. I just want to, be, just want to do something nice. Mm -hmm. And then all the photos, I will release to them. Even the photos, I gave like a two version. One is a small version where they can post on social media without being blurred or photo, right? The other right. version is a full size where they can download and keep themselves and then print it out. So I'm very considering. Uh, that's amazing. Talk to us about <laughs> that. So you also work at the hospital yes. at the same time. You are definitely a machine. Please summarize that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I don't think I have to take any deal. We didn't talk. Weekend. Sorry, I don't want to cut you off. Yeah. We didn't talk about your, your major exactly. What do you did in school? Management information system. Mm. So when my when my call when my classmate when they graduate, yeah. so someone become data analyst, some become project management or manager, and some become like administrator, IT administrator in Cisco. So they all IT related. It's all IT related. Yeah, IT related, but oh, not very awesome. specialized like a CS. Yeah, exactly. It's not like four years, mm -hmm. but we don't. We like first two years in college, just like any other business student, we study accounting. Very boring subject for me. <laughs> yeah, right. and the business, mm -hmm. just very basic stuff. And the law, um, a little bit law, yeah. Um, the last two years were about like, uh, like a database, like SQL, like a Tableau, data, data analytics stuff. So in the last year in college, I we have to select elective class, right? Okay. I select one class called Big Data. I was like, wow, that's interesting. But the thing is, that's the last class you're gonna select, you're gonna study in college. It's kind of too late to study as a career, right? So I didn't go to uh, business analyst position right away. Okay. I was working for STEM for two years, 
and I realized, mm, I like working with the people here, but it's not something I'm gonna do forever because it is like an administrative position. So there's not too much potential. Mm -hmm. And then you have to work in the hospital in the future, right? Like outside. Because you're the coordinator, you have to be outside. Right. Because when doctors have like a wet labs, which means we have to do, um, we have to practice the, because it is off, off module department, means you, they have to practice the eye surgery before they perform on, on, the, on the human, right? Yeah. So they have to do all practice late night and they have to be there and order food for them, everything, arrange the whole thing logistically. You have to, you have to call the vendor, hey, can you guys come here bring all your machine? And I haven't even called the bank, hey, can you guys give us some like human eyes? Okay, here's a funny story. Um, so, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, okay, yeah, I should be serious a little bit. Um, yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so one of my colleagues told me, hey, Jinji, I'm not going to be on site tomorrow. Yeah. Can you help me to send a package? I said, sure. I said, what is it? And he says, human head. Oh. Because eyes are, so most of the time when we get eyes from the eye bank. Hold just, up. Human head? Yes. All right. So when we get the eyes from the eye bank, it's just in a small tube mm. with all the chemical stuff, right? It's in refrigerated in the form. So that's fine, small box. But when they told me to send package, it's actually human head and we have to put in the refrigerator. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's really interesting. So do you recommend your measure to someone um, out there? Yes, I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, and it's because of my school. So what is the, what is the challenges, like in your, in your area? We study a little bit everything, uh -huh. but not very special in any of the subject. Okay. But you still have like two years or one year to mm -hmm. explore yourself, what's your, what's the subject you're interested in. For example, somebody can graduate, become, rather become business, business in analyst, right? So, that means we have something prepared on the side, right? Right. So you still have to prepare on the side a little bit. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. This is an amazing, an amazing story. Thank you. But, so I wanted to go to the hot questions now. Sure. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So you are successful just from your story. And I wanted to, uh, first, let's go into it. Are you ready for the questions? Yes. Go are you for sure? Yeah, I'm very sure. Okay. <laughs> I have money too. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, would you would you marry or date someone who earn less than you? Hmm. Okay, that's two questions. The quick answer is yes. <laughs> the, the reason I'm saying two questions is because Well, I I let let's rephrase the question then. Would you marry someone who earn less than you? Yeah. Why? It depends, right? It depends on that person's potential. Mm -hmm. So, for example, that person is in nursing school or in medical school. Yeah. They definitely have a lot of potential to make a lot of money in the future, right? And uh, it also depends on that person. What about if he's not going to medical school? He's doing something that maybe, you know, he give him potential to earn later on. What is that? Only medical school or? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no just an example. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's fine. Um, the other thing is I have confidence in myself, so I can take care of myself, and um, I think in my earning has a potential to grow up more. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry about that much. So right now, I think I kind of want to find somebody who is kind mm -hmm. and um, care about the small things. So the, because the small thing can build a connection, right? Because at the end of the day, we all adults. We all have our own job. Well, who would you give your life for my mom. to protect? My mom. Would you give your life For sure. to your mom? Yeah. Why is that? I think she is the only person in the world that loves me the most. Yeah. Because I grew with my mom alone, and uh, she sacrificed a lot, and then she gave me a lot of um, room to grow. The thing about it, as a single mom, you support your kids to go to the U.S., and you know your kids not coming, might not be coming back, but your kids won't really want to go, and then she still support me. Like, because she really loves me, she let me go. Because that's, right? So that's why I want my mom to come with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. And one thing that you wanted to tell us about yourself, something we don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't know? About what though? Like... Well, um, 
I would say something interesting you, you would love to tell us about yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I, can t I have a lot of interesting stories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, when I was in college, mm -hmm. in China, it was the first college, um, we, we, my college is like in a small island, just like Hawaii to US. It's yeah. now attached to the mainland. Mm -hmm. So it's very famous that if you can like uh, run bicycle around the mm -hmm. island. So I did that with three of the college, well, not classmates, but from the same major, three right. guys. Mm -hmm. So that's like 700 kilometers. And we did it in six days. I'm the only girl. So basically, we were riding bicycle from 7 a.m. till mm. 7 p.m. Yeah. And then we sleep in the tent. The tent is like a police station because we want to be safe as well, right? So they said, Jin Jin, you're the girl. Go talk to police. <laughs> Ask me if we can just put a tent in the police station. I said, yeah, sure. You are the girl, <laughs> okay. I'm the only girl, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then after I did that, I became very famous at my college. Because not too many girls can do this. Right. Think about like 700 mm -hmm. kilometers in six days. Wow. Yeah. I'm pretty amazing. That's, yeah. in, that's interesting. <laughs> but the thing is, mm -hmm. after I did that, and it's been 10 years, I haven't touched a bicycle at all. I'm, I'm done with the bicycle. <laughs> wow. That's an, no, inter that's an interesting story. And well, thank you so much for being in the start in the making. Thank you, you really have a great story. And I also wanted to know, where can we find you? Um, what, what can we get you? Instagram or yes. whatever the case may be. The best way to this connect with tongue. me uh -huh. is on Instagram. My Instagram is jingsei underscore photography. Um, I would have said website. So here's the thing about my website. <laughs> so when I started photography business, um, I would try to come with a domain name that can you know, get more customers. So I tried perfectphotographer.com. It didn't work out because the domain was taken out, was taken. So I was thinking, what was the one that nobody's taken? So I, so I, I tapped it, worst for job the call. It turned out nobody's taken, so I took that domain. And the second day, regret so much, but I cannot change anymore, otherwise I pay a lot of money for it. So I used worst for job the call for like three months. I was like, nope, this, this stuff sucks. And I just took it out for my Instagram account. And um, I think I'm gonna have a new website soon. For my wedding, for my wedding photography, yeah. Oh, wow. So, best way to reach out to me right now is Instagram, yeah, because I'm very active. Awesome, yeah. amazing. Uh, there is few words that you wanted to say to someone, to your mom or oh, yes. your brothers, and all the stuff. Do you have siblings? We didn't even talk about it. I do. How many siblings? Uh, four. Four. Yeah. Awesome. Well, the way you're talking about it is like ah uh, four. <laughs> Are yeah, you sure? Um, yeah, it's a complicated story, oh, yes. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's leave it on the side. So do you wanted to say something to, to, uh, to them? Yes. What is the message? Can it's I all you. Chinese style? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go in Chinese. Okay. Right there. That's your camera. Hello, Mama Guru. I love you. I hope you to come to the I to the Bye bye. Wow. Yep. Oh, you done? Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> Shams, sorry, Shams, sorry. Shams is smiling behind the scenes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Why did you say here? <laughs> no, just tell my mom we, uh, and my brother I love them. Uh, and then, oh. um, but the funny thing is because my brother was texting me yesterday. Yeah. Jinji, I miss you. It's very, very rare. Uh -huh. My brother and I, we don't really talk that much. Uh, but he texts me, it's like, Jinji, I miss you. I'm like, wow. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> wow, wow. And uh, so, there is something that we wanted to learn something. What is you? Teach me something in, in Chinese. Like, how, how, how are you? Uh, I uh, think I know how are you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, teach you something practical. Uh -huh. Like, you yeah. say, like, you're beautiful in Chinese now. What is that? You're beautiful. Okay. Say it to a girl, right? It's uh -huh. like a compliment. It's like, you're very beautiful. Hey! <laughs> what, what is that? Ni. 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 Ha. Pia. Pia. Liang. Lia. Liang. Nia. Liang. Lia. 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 Yeah, yeah. Lia Pian here. Ah, no, 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 no. What is that? Ni. Ni. Ha. Pia Liang. Pia Lia. Yeah, Nia Pia Liang. Nia Pia Liang. Yeah, correct. All right. You got it, you got it, you got it. Nia Pia Lia. Ah, is that correct? What? Ni hao is like, hello. Hello. Yeah. Ni hao, Shams. Ni hao. <laughs> Shams knows how to speak. <laughs> he knows a bit. So, ni hao pia liya. Yeah. Ni hao pia liya. Yeah. Awesome. Shams, oh, yeah. I'm good, right? Yeah. Awesome. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> All right. So, um, 
any thought we done with our episode yeah. there is something you wanted to finish with to say something you forgot maybe you remember whatever like any advice to anyone out there like anyone yes okay sure. any advice for life just one advice okay enjoy the moment because I wouldn't say you're only young once, but no matter what your age right now, just enjoy it. And then leave the moment, seize the moment. And um, that's it, I guess. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment. And don't think too much. Don't, don't ever overthink it. Because when you're overthinking, you are not living the moment. And wow. then you are not in the future, not in the past either. Just enjoy it because the moment is going to pass. And just try to have as much fun as you can. Yeah. Wow. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for being in the stars in the making. We really love to have you here. Uh, such an amazing story. I hope, you know, this story motivate anyone out there uh, for upcoming stars, for anyone who is just fighting for their dreams. Please remember, uh, success, we all have different ways of success. You got to have your own definition of success. Once you have your own definition and go toward that. So I'm going to end it here. This is the stars in the making, Ricardo. And of course, I'm going to say, Sham's vision behind the scenes. <laughs> He's all smiling and we out. Take care, guys. Thank you. Bye. Yes, yeah, Sham is right here, of course. <laughs> Bye, guys. We out. <laughs>